Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is your Valentine's Day. Bummer. Photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by me and Fropack 4, as well as the Super Huger Mega Camera Giveaway. That's right, I'm giving one of you the chance to spend up to $4,999 of my own money on anything you want at Allen's Camera. And guess what? It's free to enter, but you can also score anywhere from 100 to 400 extra entries by purchasing a single Fropack or the Grand Slam Bundle. Now, if you already own any of the Fropacks, you will already score those extra entries. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash Fropack4 to pick up the Grand Slam bundle to get yourself those 400 extra entries. You can also enter for free and read the contest rules over at bit.ly slash megafro234. First up, I've said it a million times, one of the main reasons that I switched from Sony to Canon two years ago was simple, the 28-70 F2. The 28-70 F2 is what I like to call a prime slash zoom. Now I know a zoom can't be a prime, but this is an F2. So I consider anything less than 2.8 prime worthy. Maybe a prime. Now with that being said, Canon Rumors has released a rumor saying a version two might be on the way. The current 28 to 70 F2 was one of those, look at me, I'm so cool, look what we can do type of lenses that was meant to show off what is possible with the RF mount. The rumor claims Canon will be able to squeeze further optical performance out of this lens design, as well as significant weight reduction. This lens already produces stunning images. Is it heavy? Why yes, yes it is heavy, but I have guns. So if they do decide to shave off some weight, that's gonna be great for you guys out there because you know I'm strong enough as it is. Now if the image quality does get better, I will be the first one in line to buy one, which I mean I'll be first in line to ask the Canon money truck to back it up and send me one for a short, long-term loaner. Canon Rumors also went on to mention that we might see an internal zooming version two of the RF 70 to 200 2.8 at some point in the next year or two. That's a lot of twos in this story. Uh, uh, uh. It's been a little over five years since the RF mount was announced, so it kind of makes sense that version twos might start rolling out sometime soon. Next up, we have two rumors from Sony Alpha Rumors in regards to new Sigma E mount lenses. What's the letter clap clap? What's the letter clap clap? And fine. Since I mentioned E-mount, one can only assume that these rumored lenses will also be available for the L-Mount Alliance. Alliance, Alliance, Alliance. Are you happy now? Now I know I haven't done that for a while, but you know, one way you can get me to do it more is to head on over to fronosphoto.com slash fropack4 and pick up the Grand Slam bundle. You know, I'll do it as much as you want because I'm a shill like that. I mean, not really, but kinda. Eh, whatever. Anyway, the two rumored Sigma lenses are a 500mm 5.6 Sport and a 15mm 1.4 Art Fisheye. Now we gotta talk about that fisheye first because a 15mm 1.4 fisheye that's not circular? Damn! Now, to the best of my recollection, there's no native Sony E-mount fisheye lenses. Sure, there's third-party ones, but not from a company like Sigma. If this rumor is true and I somehow get my hands on a lens like this, you know where I'm gonna take it? The skate park. Why? Because I am a skate photographer. Now, the second lens that is rumored is a 500 millimeter 5.6 that is said to be lightweight at less than 1.5 kilos, offer very fast AF with linear motors, be sharper than the 200 and 600 G, and possibly cost less than $3,000. Now, if this is true, the question is, should you spend the $3,000 or less on a fixed 500 5.6 or save some money and get a 200 to 600 G for close to half that price? Two thirds. Now, if the 500 is real and I get my hands on it, maybe I'll take it to the zoo to shoot some birds. Or maybe I'll try to shoot some lacrosse outside if I can find something outside to shoot with a 500 millimeter lens. You don't score until you score. Now, what do you think I should shoot if these lenses are real? Hey, quickly, if you don't listen to Fronos Photo Raw Talk that is available every Friday, wherever you get your podcast, could you please leave a comment down below on why you don't listen to Raw Talk? Thanks. And finally, who's number one? We're number one. Yeah. Last week, Canon put out a press release letting the world know that they have solidified the number one mirrorless camera brand position for a third year in a row in 2023. Hey, number one. 
and was the number one mirrorless camera brand in the US in 2023. Hey, now, all of this is according to Circa, a retail tracking service that tracks sales and then sells that info back to anyone who wants to buy it. So I guess Canon's number one, right? We're number one. Now, according to Sony, who replied back to Petapixel, who asked them what they thought about the Canon story, not so fast. Sony says it has data from the same exact agency that contests Canon's position. They go on to tell Petapixel that they are number one in several categories, like number one full frame mirrorless camera brand in both dollars and units, as well as the A7 IV was the number one full frame camera of 2023 in both dollars and units. So who's right? Phone call. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Ah, uh, Roberta L, where have you been from Canon PR? Oh, uh, wait, wait, hold, hold that thought. Call waiting. Hello? Oh, it's Keisha from Sony PR. Hold on, let me merge you both in on my rotary phone. Hey, you guys there? Jesus. Stop it, guys. Stop it. Stop it. You know, both of these companies have a ton of lawyers, and I don't think lawyers would allow them to make claims that they couldn't substantiate. Your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Now, Petapixel said that Sony told them that they didn't have any intentions of posting these numbers this year. It only supplied them when asked about Canon's claim. They also went on to say, and I quote, despite these accomplishments, we made the decision to refrain from publicly broadcasting any of these claims via a press release or any other type of formal announcement. And that we are an organization that is focused on innovation, on supporting creators, on bringing products to market that allow them to capture that which has never been captured before. This has been the case since 2013, when we launched the world's first full frame mirrorless camera. You know, that's kind of funny because here's a Sony press release from 216 2022 saying that Sony Electronics is the number one mirrorless camera brand and number one mirrorless lens brand in 2021 in North America. We're number one. And here is also a photo pre-pandemic at Photo Plus where you can clearly see that Sony isn't focused on letting anyone know we're number one. At least not in 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. At the end of the day, Who's right? Who cares? I guarantee you they're both right because they both pay a lot of lawyers a lot of money to probably buy Leicas and Porsches, but they wouldn't let them say something that they couldn't substantiate and back up that they might get sued on. So they're both probably right. Canon's probably number one in overall sales of mirrorless cameras, being that they have the crop sensors that sell really well, as well as full frame cameras. And Sony's probably number one in full frame altogether. But we all know who's truly number one, Pentax. At least we're not a Pentax. Oh yeah, one more thing. Do you know who's absent entirely from this fight? Nikon. You stirred up a bloody hornet's nest nap. And there you have it, Jared Polin, Fotocom. See ya.